Welcome to the Tulip Queen Pageant Virtual Edition. We're so glad you're here. I want to remind you of some of the positives. You get to stay home. You don't have to wear a mask. You don't have to social distance and you don't have to use hand sanitizer. So grab a cup of tea and maybe an almond patty and get comfy because you are in for a real treat. On behalf of the Queen's Committee, the elected court and myself, we want to thank you for joining us. Your support whether you are a family member, friend, or community member of both the festival and these young ladies is much appreciated. The resilience and flexibility shown by these young women is inspiring. They are creative and talented and any one of them will make an amazing queen and ambassador for our city. Together as a team, these girls will play a huge role in advertising and promoting our annual Tulip Festival. They travel to various media sources, participate in interviews, and create a road show to be shared at many places. Additionally, they represent Orange City in ma many area parades. Trust me, these young women are an important resource for our city. My name is Beth Ullman, and I'm honored to be co-emceeing with last year's Tulip Festival Queen, Miss Maddie Mulder. I've taught for MOC Floyd Valley for 32 years, and I also serve as an adjunct at Morningside and Northwestern Colleges. I'm married to Terry Ullman, and we have two sons, Colin and Cameron. In my free time, I enjoy visiting our family cabin in Minnesota and watching sports. At Tulip Time, you may hear me announce a parade or a mode show, and I thank the committee for inviting me to be a special part of this Tulip Queen pageant. And now, to introduce my co MC, Miss Maddie Mulder was crowned the Orange City Tulip Festival Queen one year ago. Welcome home, Maddie. Thank you. Will you please share with us what you've been up to personally? I would love to. This past year, I have started attending the University of Sioux Falls. There I'm studying Spanish education, and it's been a very different year, just like it has for everyone else, but it's been so fun, and I'm so glad I get to be there, meet new people, and just have new experiences. Thank you. It's now our pleasure to welcome Miss Lindsay Jacobsma. Welcome, Lindsay. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Lindsay Jacobsma. I've lived in Orange City my whole life. My parents are Melinda and the late Randy Jacobsma. I have five siblings, Brittany, Tyler, Tasha, Lexi, and Lucas. They're all married, so that makes me the baby of the family. My in-laws are Keith Koistra, Blake Kruger, Riley Hookstra, Danielle Jacobsma, and Morgan Jacobsma. I also have grandparents who live in Orange City, Harlan and Tress Jacobsma, and a grandma who lives in Hospers, Florence Dykstra. Together, my family and I love to cheer on the Hawkeyes, and I enjoy spending as much time as I can with my nieces and nephews. I am a senior at Unity Christian High School. In the past three years, I have been involved in volleyball, softball, and band. This year, I have enjoyed being a living group leader. I attend Redeemer URC in, in Orange City, and I am involved in catechism and youth group. Next fall, I plan on attending Northwestern College with a major in business administration finance and a minor in Spanish. Thank you very much. Each year, the Queen's Committee uh, writes some interview questions. So I'm going to ask you to please pull a number from Queen Maddie's basket, and then I will ask you the corresponding question. Question number three. Question number three. Who is the person you most look up to and why? The person I most look up to is my mom. Um, I look up to her because she has she, she d has done an amazing job raising our family, and she's very selfless, and she also knows how to have fun and enjoy everything she does for us. Thank you. In addition to that question, Queen Maddie and I have each written a question to ask you. Mine is, if you woke up tomorrow morning and you could have one amazing quality or ability, what would you pick and why? If I could have one amazing quality and ability, I would say to be selfless because that would help me throughout the whole day or throughout my whole life, helping others as well as my family and preparing me for the rest of my life in school and work. Thank you. 
And my question for you is, if you could build any business in Orange City, what would you build and why? If I could build any business in Orange City, I would have to do a... I think I would build a, a shoe store that displays lots of different shoes and also different ones from for Tulip Festival and from our Dutch heritage. Awesome, thank you. Each year, shortly after the girls are elected to the court, the Queen's Committee hosts a tea for the girls to get to know each other better. At this tea, the girls are given a question. The question to, is to be answered in the form of a presentation at the Tulip Queen pageant and should in some way promote our city or festival. This year's question, which will be followed by each girl's presentation, is as follows. In 1907, a bolt of lightning struck and destroyed the pinnacle at the top of the Sioux County Courthouse. A 10-foot bronze statue named Lady Justice replaced the pinnacle at the top of the courthouse. Lady Justice has observed 79 tulip festivals in her lifetime atop the building. Each member of the court has been asked to describe a particular decade of the, fe of the festivals. There were changes made to the festivals of the 1970s, and Miss Lindsay Jacobsma, as Lady Justice, will share more about our Dutch heritage and those changes. Miss Lindsay. Tulip Festival is a three-day tribute to a heritage brought to this country by Orange City's Dutch founders. And I, Lady Justice, have had the privilege of observing 79 tulip festivals throughout my time here in Orange City. To me, 1970 was a major turning point as Orange City was celebrating 100 years. Those organizing the festival expanded to try to make the tulip festival experience authentically Dutch. This was very evident throughout the whole decade. In the year 1970, a group later known as the Dutch Heritage Boosters sparked a renewed interest in Dutch tradesmen. They would walk in the parade and display several items from different occupations, like this bread I have here. Also during this year, there was a municipal airport dedication. This was the beginning of the flying breakfast and there was a helicopter demonstration. Then in 1975, the first non-denominational church service was held for the campers who stayed in Orange City until Sunday. By 1977, this was held in Windmill Park and became a regular thing, not only for the campers, but also for the Orange City residents. Throughout this whole decade, there was one queen with six girls on her court. And starting in 1976, girls from Northwestern College, MOC High School, and Unity Christian High School were nominated to be on the court. This group was narrowed down to seven by a popular vote. One of the three schools had three court members, while the other two had two court members on a rotating basis. 1976 was the last year of the coronation of the queen held in Windmill Park. This was held every afternoon of the festival, right after the parade. This included a processional by the queen and her court from Central Avenue, past audience onto the bleachers, and onto the stage on the band shell. The queen and her court wore formal gowns, like this one I have here from the court in 1974. They would wear Dutch costumes for the evening parades and for informal appearances. This changed to only authentic Dutch costumes from a Dutch province, city, or place in 1977. The first children's games were held in 1977 when a group of second graders displayed Dutch playtime activity as part of a program event called Kinderspielen. The Mocho also started during this year. Both of these things were held in Windmill Park when they were moved to the Strat Fest in 1979. 1978 was a big year as adult Dutch dancing started. Six authentic Dutch dances were chosen to be performed. Most of these dances were special parts of carnivals and festivals in the Netherlands. 1979 also added a new element. 
This was the year the Tulip Festival Steering Committee sold reserve seat tickets along the portion of the parade route to help defray the rising costs of putting on the festival. Drawing in the streets also started during this year for children from preschool to sixth grade to use colored chalk to draw their Tulip Festival experience in the streets. Today, as I look back to the 70s and all of the decades in between, they have all played an important role in shaping what Tulip Festival is like today. Throughout the years, traditions have been made and have been changed, but the sense of community and Dutch heritage has stayed the same. Whether I see little kids jumping for joy in their Dutch costumes, hear the unique sound of wooden shoes and the Dutch organ, or see the man in the corner office who loved to greet friends and visitors as they passed, our community never fails to come together to celebrate our Dutch heritage. Your presentation was absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much. Our final question is, what does Tulip Festival mean to you? So I have lived in Orange City for my whole life. I have grown up going every year. Um, whether it's going with my family or participating in the parade, it has always been a part of my life. And it has helped me better understand our heritage and my Dutch roots and where I came from. So it has helped shape me into the person I am today. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. This wraps up our video of Ms. Lindsay Jacobsma.